Hello, so in this supplemental video, we're gonna go over using U substitution for a harder looking integral. And what I wanna emphasize with this example is it's not gonna be immediately obvious what we call U in this case for our substitution. So we're actually gonna do two substitutions that don't lead us anywhere before getting to the third one that ultimately works. So in this case, we have this integral sine of x all over one plus cosine squared of x. And we know that if we take derivatives of sines and cosines, they inherently look kind of related to one another. Um, in terms of derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is a minus sine. But it's not immediately clear, at least to me, what we should call u in this case. So let's try the first way. And just as a spoiler, we're trying things out and seeing what happens. And when we get stuck, we reassess and go and try something else. Now, the first thing we might try is letting u equal sine of x. So if we let u equal sine of x, we rewrite our integral, of course. Anywhere there is a sign, we replace that with a u. And the last thing we would need to change is that dx into the new variable du. And we do that by differentiating our substitution. So derivative of sine is cosine. And then when we go ahead and solve for dx, we get that dx is equal to du all over cosine of x. So when we substitute that down into the new integral, we get our du, we get a cosine of x. And if we look at this integral now down below, it doesn't look like those cosine of x terms are gonna cancel out. So at this point, it looks like we're stuck just with the way that this substitution worked out because there's really no way for us to cancel out those cosines that are in the denominator now. Because our substitution, of course, if we relook at it, is in terms of signs. So I'll just make that little note. We're gonna be stuck here. So let's try another method. Okay. Again, we know that there's some relationship between derivatives and antiderivatives of sine and cosine. So we're kind of thinking of u substitution in this case. Well, let's let u equal that whole denominator. Then we tried letting u equal what was in the numerator and we got stuck. So let's try letting u equal that whole denominator. So let u equal one plus cosine square root of x. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and differentiate because again, we're going to have to resubstitute or re-express that dx in terms of our new integration variable, which will be a du. So differentiating u with respect to x, when we differentiate one plus cosine square root of x, well, the one goes away when we differentiate with respect to x. Then when we differentiate the cosine squared, that two will come down in front by chain rule. So we still have a factor of cosine of x to the first power, but we multiply then by the derivative of cosine, which is a minus sine of x. So this derivative turns out to be two, negative two times cosine of x times sine of x. Okay. And when we go ahead and try to solve for dx in terms of du, we'll get that dx is equal to du all over negative two cosine of x sine of x. So let's go ahead and plug this stuff into our original integral. So plugging into our original integral, what we called u, so that sine of x still stays upstairs, downstairs in the denominator is just that u. And then resubstituting now what we have for dx in terms of our new integration variable du, we substitute that second thing, the du all over minus two cosine of x sine of x. And fortunately, we see that the signs cancel out, but those cosines are still, that one cosine is still there in the denominator. So we still have that in this integral, we have a one over u. And then we have a minus one over two cosine of x and then a du. Now, if we go back and relook at our substitution, we could find a relationship between just cosine by itself and the new integration variable u. As in, if we take this substitution and solve for cosine, we would eventually get that well cosine squared of x is equal to u minus one, subtracting both sides 
again, from that substitution. And now if we take the square root of both sides, we can get that cosine of x is equal to the square root of u minus one. Technically, I guess plus or minus the square root of u minus one, but let's just go with this. So if we take that cosine of x is square root of u minus one, we can substitute it into our integral down below. So I'll pull that negative one half out in front. We have the integral of one over u and times now one over what we have for cosine of x, square root of u minus one. So we've done a bunch of work so far, done a bunch of substitutions. And well, at this junction, I don't know about you, I'm actually feeling a little stuck here. I'm not quite sure how to actually integrate what's there right now with any type of substitution that we have. So I'm thinking, you know what? Let's go ahead and try something else. So I'll just say right now, I'm a little confused or a little stuck at what we, how we could proceed. So let's go ahead to our original integral and try something else. So far, we've let u equal everything in the numerator, everything in the denominator. What if we just choose a specific part of what's there in the numerator or denominator? So by that, I mean, well, we could try letting u equal what if we just let it equal the cosine squared of x? So if we rewrote our integral, the original one, we would have that sine of x that's still from the original integral divided by, this case, one plus u squared, or sorry, one plus u. And the last thing we need to substitute again is we need to get the dx in terms of the new integration variable, du. So we differentiate our substitution. We do the same type of chain rule before. The two comes down from the cosine squared. So we have two times cosine, and then we differentiate the cosine itself. It gives us a minus sign. And then when we go ahead and solve for dx in terms of du, we get what we had earlier, dx is equal to du all over minus two times cosine of x times sine of x. So let's see what that gives us in terms of the integral after we substitute it in. So putting in the du over minus two cosine x sine x, again, substituting the dx for the new integration variable. Again, we see that the signs cancel out we're still left with a cosine downstairs. So we have a one over one plus u times a one over minus two cosine of x times du. And well, we still have this issue of that cosine of x sitting there. It's still in terms of the original integration variable. So we can go back and look and see, you know what, is there any relationship between u and the cosine of x that we can get itself? And well, we can also just take this and say, I can solve for a cosine by itself and cosine of x here will give me, well, a plus or minus square root of u. I'll just go with the plus square root of u. So if we substitute that downstairs for what we have, we have one over one over one plus u times, well, one over minus two times the square root of u. And well, this integral, when I'm looking at it, where we've arrived again, we've tried another substitution here. It doesn't look like this is going anywhere. I still don't know really what to do with those terms in the denominator. It's not just a straightforward power rule type integration, just like the previous one that we had before with that mix of square roots with plus or minus things or other terms of one over plus or minus variables. So at this junction, I'm just gonna say, I'm feeling a bit stuck here. Again, so we're, what can we do with this? We know that, well, if we differentiate a cosine, we get a minus sine, we differentiate a sine, we get a cosine. So this very feels like it should be a U sub problem in some way. There's one thing we haven't tried yet. If we go back to the original integral, 
We've let u equal that whole numerator. We've let u equal that whole denominator. We've let u equal just a piece of that denominator. We haven't let u equal just a single cosine. So let's go ahead and try just letting u equal a single cosine. So this is gonna be a case where fourth time is a charm. So in this case, let's let u equal a single cosine of x. If we rewrite that integral now, we still have that sine of x sitting there. In the denominator now, we have a one plus, this time a u squared, because we had a cosine squared in the original integral, and now we let u equal cosine, so we have a one plus u squared in the denominator of the new integral. But we still need to change the dx into the new integration variable. So we can differentiate that cosine du over dx is equal to minus sine of x. And we can solve for dx in terms of du. So solving for dx in terms of du gives us a du all over minus sine of x. So let's substitute that down below. Now, when we substitute that down below, let me just lasso this up a bit. What we see happens is those signs will cancel out and the new integral we have, bringing that minus sign out in front is minus the integral of one over one plus u squared du. And believe it or not, this is actually an antiderivative that we could know. For example, just as a side note down here, if I ask you what the derivative was, let me take the derivative, let's use a new variable actually, just to not confuse us. So if I had a function arctangent of z, and I took a derivative with respect to z, we would get a one over one plus z squared. And then again, because we have the relationship between derivatives and integrals and we go back and forth, if we integrate both sides with respect to these, with respect to z, basically what we see on that left-hand side, the integral and the derivative will just undo each other basically by fundamental theorem of calculus. And we get that the arctangent is equal to, well, that integral one over one plus z squared. So the reason I bring this up is we actually know, because we know what the derivative of an arctangent is, we know the integral of one over one plus z squared. So in this case up above, when we have a one over one plus u squared, this thing is actually equal to minus the arctangent of our variable, in this case, the variable is u plus c. So the last thing we get to do for this problem is resubstitute in our u that we had up above, which for this substitution, we called u cosine of x. So our final answer will be minus the arctangent of cosine of x. And then of course, plus our friend, the integration constant c. And that is the antiderivative of sine of x over one plus cosine of x. The things I hope you take away from this video are, we try things out for some of these use substitution problems and maybe we get stuck. And if we get stuck, we go back and reassess another way that we could try doing this integral.